Good afternoon. We're continuing with our screencasts for today, and this one is going to talk to us about how we can create custom buttons for our website. Just want to reiterate that I had a plan when I started this. I knew how many web pages I was going to have, I knew what those files were going to be named, and I knew what the text was that I wanted to have displayed. So I'm going to be, in my example, creating four primary buttons, a home and about, a contact, and a products. And in keeping with my visual plan, I had planned a banner that was 800 pixels wide and we built that in our previous screencast. So what I'm going to now do is build four buttons that are going to align horizontally underneath my banner. So my buttons are going to be 200 pixels wide and 20 pixels tall. I chose 200 pixels for the width because 200 times 4 is 800, and then my buttons will end up being the same width as my banner. In addition to the fact that I'm going to create these four custom buttons, I'm going to integrate something that we call a rollover. I want my buttons to kind of have an interactive feel so that they're a little interactive whenever um, I'm using the website. And by interactive, I mean when my cursor hovers over top of them, there'll be a visual change that we see on the screen. That's called a rollover effect. And the rollover effect that I'm going to demonstrate is very simple. I'm just going to have the color of the text change upon the rollover. And you're like, wow, how do we do that? Is it magic? It's not. It's actually just an image swap. We actually create two versions of the button. And there's actually um, a custom button handout. It's been posted in D2L. It's also available on the iTech server. And this custom button handout kind of explains that in a little more detail. And the custom button handout uses a different technique to create the rollover. It uses a desaturation. But the overall idea is that for each button, instead of just having one image, I have two. And then when my mouse hovers over top of it on the screen, one image swaps for the other one. Okay, So in order to do that, I'm going to be creating two buttons. I'm going to create an up button. And in my demonstration example, my up button is going to have black text. And my over button is going to have white text. All right, so enough about planning. Let's get started. I'm going to jump into Photoshop. I'm going to open up my dots JPEG and I am going to crop this tool down, right? When I crop, I want to look up in my control bar and I want to put in my pixel dimensions. I want to crop to be 200 pixels wide and 20 pixels high. And that's going to kind of limit the shape of my box so that I'm absolutely sure that um, I'm not uh, cropping to a size that's not ultimately useful for me. Once I select the portion of the image that I want to use, I'm going to click the check mark up in my control bar. That's going to commit me to that current crop. So boom, got my image cropped. And then you're going to say to yourself, my gosh, that's so tiny. It is. I've cropped this pretty significantly. So it's going to be necessary to change your view. When you change your view, don't get all weirded out if it looks very pixelized on the screen. It might. That's probably because I'm currently viewing this at 800%, right? So yeah, it's going to look kind of not okay because I'm viewing it at 800%. And, you know, I would expect to see pixels when I'm viewing something at 800% of actual size. Okay, much like we did, in the banner tutorial, I'm going to click into my layers, and if the la the background layer is locked, I want to click to unlock it, just so we kind of have that step handled. Then I want to add my text. I'm going to grab my type tool, hovers about uh, two thirds of the way down in the toolbar, looks like a capital T. It does share a button with some other tools to so make sure that you have your horizontal type tool. That's likely the one that you will want to use. You're going to go ahead and click in. When you do that, your control bar changes to show you uh, typeface and size. 
and color options. I'm going to go ahead and type in my text for my first uh, button that I want to create. Might find it necessary to use my move tool to kind of move it around a little bit on my screen. And um, if I would need to make any further changes, I'd grab my type tool back and I would change my type. In my case, my up state of my button, the first one I'm going to be creating, uses black. So I'm going to leave that um, as my color. Um, I'm going to notice pretty quickly that I have a problem that's similar to the problem I had on my banner. I have poor contrast in certain areas. So our correction for that the last time was that we selected just the background layer and I actually am going to hide from view my type layer while I do that. And I went over here and I grabbed one of these tools. The last time we talked we used the burn tool and the burn tool actually darkened the image area. This time we're going to use the dodge tool. The dodge tool actually lightens the background area and that's more our problem this time. We have some problem areas where we have very low contrast because we have kind of black text on top of kind of a very dark background. And since this is the primary state of our button, the up state, it's really important that this text is legible. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to work first with my shadow areas. And remember, I can change shadow midtone highlight from the control bar. I can also change the overall size of my tool in pixels if I need to. And I'm going to click right in here and I'm going to uh, dodge some of my um, really dark shadow areas and I'm going to do the same thing to my midtones. What we're going to find is that that lightened and brightened just to those areas of the image and I have much better contrast right now. All right, so at this point I'm going to consider myself done with my products button. And at this point, it's essentially just the um, upstate of my products button. And I'm going to save this. The saving is super important. When I save this, I don't want to save over top of the dots JPEG image. So I want to save as and give it a brand new file name. OK, so we're saving. And we want to make sure of a couple things. We want to make sure that we save this in our originals folder because um, we have to save an original version of this file. And this is critically, critically important. I want to save a .psd or Photoshop version of the button because that allows me to have the most editability. It's going to keep my layers separated. Um, and it's going to allow me to most importantly come back and edit that text layer later on. I also need to be really kind of aware of how I am saving these buttons. So this was my products button. I want to go ahead and I want to be able to save this as product.psd and make sure we have that PSD file extension. We're saving that in originals. I also like to add a little note to the end. It's going to be the product up .psd. You can choose to put the state of the button first if you would like. Put in up products.psd. It's going to be important for you to note in your file name what button state this is because we're going to have a tremendous number of files whenever we're done with this and we, we need to have an organized way of naming them. So I'm going to save this as upproducts.psd in my originals. Boom. While I have it open, I'm going to immediately file, export, save for web, because although I want to keep the PSD for editability, the Photoshop document, I got to have one that I can put in my website not really going to need to make any changes in here. I'm going to make sure that this is saving in the images subfolder of my root folder and I'm going to keep that same name up products JPEG. There we go. All saved. While I have this up products.psd file opened in Photoshop, 
I'm going to go ahead and immediately create my over products button. All I have to do is highlight my text, and in my case, I was changing my color. Oops, got too many F's in there, I think. And I've changed the color, and that's the visual effect I'm looking for for my rollover. I want to go ahead, do the same thing. I want to save two different files. I want to save as an over products PSD Photoshop document in my originals. Save. Perfect. And I'm going to need the over state of this button as an export save for web. JPEG, saving that. I'm going to have an over products JPEG saving again in the images subfolder of the root folder of my website. Boom. Okay, so you might kind of be like, oh, okay, great. Got that. Know how to make that. Got the process down. I crop the image. I add the text. And then I save the up. I save the over. I export them for web. But here's the really true shortcut. I do not have to start from scratch with every single button, especially if my plan is that my buttons all have the same kind of specialized background image. I would literally, while I have, for example, over products PSD open, let's just change the text. I need a home. I'm going to save as, and this time I'm going to save it as over home. PSD in my originals. Boom. I could do the file export for web. Boom. Over home JPEG. Direct that to the images subfolder. And then I can say, oh wait, it's not enough to have an over home PSD. I need an up home PSD. All right. So once we kind of have a plan for this and we understand the process, um, oops, don't want to do that. That was my up. Oh, almost got carried away and didn't save my images correctly. That would have been problematic. Once we have a process for this, a process in place, it becomes very sort of procedural and it doesn't actually take that long to create the buttons. I highly recommend creating all of your buttons in one sitting. Develop a little process and procedure, stick with it, get and create all of the states for all of the buttons that you need all at once. Please remember that when you are creating these, that you want to be saving the PSD version, the Photoshop version. That way, if possibly you spelled a word wrong, you can come back to that later on and quickly edit it, right? It's really frustrating to make, you know, 16 custom files for buttons and then realize that you misspelled products. And that does happen because we're so focused on the technical parts of this that we kind of miss out on um, the, the, the basic typing. When we're done, we should see that we have all of the states of our button images placed and positioned into Dreamweaver. And we're actually going to go ahead and look at positioning them in Dreamweaver. But I can tell that I'm going to have to make a fourth clip for that because I'm almost out of time in my video clip slot. So stay tuned for part two of how to put your custom buttons into Dreamweaver.